We just want to praise God and bless his holy name. For he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. It is good to be in the house of God. It's good to be in the land of the living. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because you get worse. Somebody's checking out of here every day. While we're yet speaking, somebody's transitioning right now. But God spared us to come to the house of God. We can at least bless his name. For the word says, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. I just get excited when I get to the house of God. Because I appreciate every moment that the Lord gives me. Because he didn't have to do it, but he did. And because he did, I got to say thank you, Lord. I've got to show my appreciation. Not because of something great that I did, but because of who he is. Oh, he spared us. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. Hallelujah. I am glad to be in the house of God. Thank you. And thank God that you had a mind to come to the house of God. Thank God for all of you online. Praise God. And we welcome all of our guests, praise God, in the house. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Because anytime these doors are open, you're welcome to come in and help us celebrate the name of the Lord. Because we're going to bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. As long as there's breath in my body. And the word says, if I got breath, I ought to praise the Lord. So I'm going to give him thanks. Hallelujah. Praise God because he's worthy of all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Amen. And those online, we appreciate you as well. Praise God. But you can bless him right where you are because God will be in the midst of the praises. Hallelujah. Those that have your Bibles and you're able to stand, I ask that you stand for the reading of the word. Hallelujah. And let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter. Praise God. And let's start at verse 21. Actually, let's start at verse 20. Deuteronomy 7, beginning at verse 20, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Moreover, the Lord your God will send the hornet among them until those who are left, who hide themselves from you, are destroyed. You shall not be terrified of them, for the Lord your God, the great and awesome God, is among you. And the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you little by little. You will be unable to destroy them at once, lest the beast of the field become too numerous for you. But the Lord your God will deliver them over to you and will inflict defeat upon them until they are destroyed. Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, God, we bless you and we thank you for this appointed time to declare your word. Father, we speak that your word will go forth unhindered and that the word of God will fall on good soil, that it might take root and bring forth the fruit that you desire right now. And we declare that the enemy shall not be able to steal it. But God, that word will remain and bring glory to thy name. We bless you and appreciate you for who you are. For who you are makes you worthy right by yourself. And we bless thy name. And we appreciate all that you have done, yet doing, and all that you're about to do. God, release and give you freedom to move as you desire and declare it to be so in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Bless the name of the Lord. And as I begin to uh, meditate and begin to think what the Lord would have to share as we went to this particular book, Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, and began to read those verses, praise God, it spoke to my spirit, praise God, and we as a people of God, God has a principle in this word. Now we know that he was writing, praise God, this word was spoken to encourage the Israelites and all the enemies that was attacking them. And the word was sent to them to tell them, 
Don't be terrified of them. For the Lord your God is great and awesome. Praise God. And that, praise God, he is among you. See, and I think King James, regular King James or some other version said the Lord is great and terrible. Praise God. But what that is saying is God is great to his own. Amen. Amen. But he's terrible to the enemies that's against the people of God. In other words, he's letting the Israelites know, I know the enemy is coming in after you, but don't be terrified of the enemy because I am fighting for you. And he tells them in this passage as he's encouraging them, it says the Lord your God will drive out all those nations before you. And he says, I'm going to do it little by little. And he says, because you won't be able to destroy them at once. Lest the beast of the field become too numerous for you. And I want to use for a topic today, little by little. Because the body of Christ is at a point that we need encouraging from the word of God. Now, God is telling the Israelites here, don't be terrified because the nations are coming against you. God is saying to us as a church today, don't you be scared or afraid of what the world is trying to do to you. Praise God. What those that appear to be enemies that's plotting against you, working against you and treating you wrong. Don't you be afraid of them, but know in whom you belong. And if you belong to God, he is reminding us today that he is great and awesome. Praise God. That's among us. We got to know the God that lives on the inside of us. Praise God. Hallelujah. And when we know that, we know who's fighting for us. And he told the Israelites, you don't have to be afraid of your enemies. Praise God, because I'm going to drive them out. Little by little. And when God dropped that in my spirit, it lit up like a light bulb. Little by little. Because, see, you got to understand something. God may have spoken some promises to you. You may have received a word from the Lord about where he was taking you and what he was doing for you. Or you may just had a request and you put it up before the Lord, believing that God was going to take you to that request, praise God, that you was praying or promised that, that you was praying about and you felt good in your spirit that God was going to do it. But seemed like as time began to progress along, it looked like ain't no progress being made. And as you don't see you getting there, praise God, like you think you ought to get there, discouragement begins to set in. But God wants to remind us today, just as he has reminded the Israelites when the enemies were fighting against them. He said, don't you be terrified about what they're trying to do. So don't you worry about what they're trying to do to you right now. It might not be right, don't feel right, and you know it ain't right. But the one thing you need to know is the God in whom you believe. The God in whom you serve, he has spoken his word. And he says, little by little will we be able or will you be able to conquer your enemy? See, we want everything instantaneous, raise, praise God. Hit the button and it's done. I pray to God today and I want to see it done in the next few minutes. God don't work like that. But as we read this passage of scripture, he told the Israelites, he says, I'm going to drive the enemy out, but it's going to be done little by little. So it ain't an issue of whether you're going to walk in victory and walk in the success that God has called you. It's a matter of time. Because he already said, I'm going to drive them out. And I'm going to allow you to do it little by little. And so what God is saying today, let patience have its perfect work. Don't try to rush the process. But if you let patience have its perfect work, 
James said that you'll be perfect in time and wanting nothing. But you got to let patience ride its course. So what the enemy tried to do is frustrate you, aggravate you. And some of you right now might be a little irritated because you've been waiting on God to do something and it just seemed like he's sleep. Don't see no progress in your eyes anywhere. But whether you see God at work or not, when you are standing on that word, God is working because his word says he neither slumbers nor sleep. Praise God. God is working behind the scene. And you better know that he's working because he called us to walk by faith and not by sight. It is time out to quit looking at everything in our own eyes, but look at it from the word of God. Because he and his word, they are one. And he told them, he said, you gonna, I'm going to drive them out and you're going to be able to do it little by little. Because he says that if you did it all at once, in other words, if God blessed you like he want to bless you, you couldn't handle it. Because if all those blessings come to you, you'd rise up and think you was all of that. And God is trying to keep the balance in place so that when he does send it your way, you won't let the things become your God. That he will still be your God. You will still bless his name and know that it was not because of your gifting and not because of your talent. But it was because he allowed it to be so. Boy, if that didn't encourage me because... Anybody that know me, I, I'm, I'm one of those, I guess, labeled conservative in certain things because my thing is, I believe what God's word says when he says line upon line, precept upon precept. In other words, I understand I'm moving in the right direction. It ain't happening overnight, but I'm still going towards the destination. Little by little. And I said, God, thank you for confirming that because, you know, in this society that we live in, everything is based on how fast you can get it done. And then they tell you who, who sleeps can't get nothing done. Yeah, if you sleep, you might not. But if I'm taking a step at a time, I'm still getting there. I won't get there as fast as somebody that's running, but I'm still walking, but I'm being consistent and steady with the walk, heading towards the destination that God has promised. And what God was reminding them, and he says, you can't do it all at once. That's why you get frustrated, because the enemy puts it in front of you and said, look at everybody else running past you. You ain't doing this, you ain't doing that. But if God promised you, and you're standing on his word, watch God go to work. When we quit trying to live like people expect us to live and live according to this word, it will bring a level of peace that you've never known. Because a lot of things that we catch ourselves doing sometimes is we are doing it because we think that's what they expect. It don't matter what they expect. What does God expect? Are you living for them or are you living for God? We got to get our priorities in line. Now, God don't want us acting all ruling and out of order. But you got to know where your directions come from. And when you know that, you follow the directions of the king that you serve. And if anybody agree, praise God. If they disagree, still praise God because they ain't got nothing to give to you. We don't live according to man, but we live to please God. And God wants us to understand that there is no weapon that's been formed against us that will be able to prosper. And when you understand that, you'll quit worrying and allowing the enemy to crowd your mind and say, it ain't going to happen. I don't know why I'm trying to do everything that I'm supposed to be doing and it just don't look like it's going to work. But you got to go back to the word of God, just like he told the Israelites 
I'm going to drive them out, but it's going to be done little by little because I don't want the beast to come out and consume you. And all God was saying is, and the end of you got kids, you can understand that. Your children want certain things, and you want to give them things. But you realize some things that they want, if you give it to them too soon, it'll destroy them instead of help them. But in their eyesight, they think they can handle it. But you already know they can't handle it. God already knows some of us can't, can't handle success too quickly. But when you have to go through something to get it, then can't nobody tell you, I gave that to you. You know you paid the price and walked, and you got it because God directed you through the process, even though you had to take some licks, some knockdowns, and some whole lot of heartache, but you still came through. And while you was going through, you said, I'm still holding on to what God is saying to me. I'm walking according to that word, and it don't matter what it looked like. So it's not an issue of whether we're going to have victory and success. It's just a matter of timing. And when we settle that timing issue, peace can come in. And you'll sit back and say, God is in your hands. Do what you will as you will. But let me align myself with what you're doing so I can walk in that peace. Now, when you think about it, little by little, that means progress is always being made, but it's just not being made at the level that you want it to be made at. Now, the progress to your promised land, like I said, may not be at the speed that you think it should be, but you're going there. And what God is wanting to do is get rid of some of that frustration and irritation because you're thinking that it ain't happening like it ought to be. But you need to remind yourself that God has already promised and what God promised he's able to perform. And he says his word won't go back to him void, but it will accomplish in the thing that it's been sent to do. So God loves us so much, he's not going to let your success overwhelm you up front, but he's going to let you go into it at the proper time when you're able to handle it. Because, you know, there's some folk that bless themselves right out of church. Now let me tell you what I'm thinking about. When they ain't got nothing, they in church praying, Lord, I need you to open this door. Lord, I need you to help me get this promotion. And then when God begin to show favor and they begin to gain the promotion, praise God, they stop praying as much. Then they say, well, got a little money in my pocket now. Believe I go to the beach this weekend. I ain't going to church. <laughs> Laying up on the beach. Praise God. God opened up the door. You got a little change so you can go to the beach. But before you ain't had no change, you were trying to get the promotion. You in church, what can I do? Ready to do anything. Let me work. Let me do this. Let me do that. God bless you. You put him on the black background. Oh, you enjoying the blessing, but you forgot. And you ain't totally forgot, but it gets a little bit easier now because you obtain the promotion that you were looking for. And then when you get that promotion, it brought you the material, the prosperity that you needed to buy some of the things that you wanted. And so now you're a little bit comfortable. You're not, your budget is not as tight, as I should say. And you may not be struggling like you used to struggle. And because you're not used to that struggling, you think you're already a right because the enemy is constantly putting ideas in your mind. He can't make you do nothing, but he can do suggestions. And if we think on those things, we're going to act on them. The enemy knows that, and that's why he tries so hard to bombard you with different thoughts all the time, different opportunities, different things to pull you away from God. But God said little by little, because I don't want the enemy to, to uh, come out against you. In other words, he calls it the beast in here. And see, the beast is 
whatever pulls you away or distracts you from God, that's your beast. See, God can bless you with a job and you're making good money and all of that. And now all your bills paid, you got money in the bank, you got investments, you got all of that. But what you fail to have is that relationship with God. He blessed you. He caused you to get there. But now you're so focused on it because that job and everything you got is much more demanding. Because sometimes we run after the promotions in the job because we want the dough. Because we feel like if I get this amount of money, my, my life will be less. I won't have to deal with this. I got money to pay my bills and all of that. So it won't be check to check. And God don't want you living check to check. But what he wants you to do is realize he is the source and everything else is a resource. So don't get caught up on the resource. Stay connected to the source. Because the resource can change at any given time. And then you get in there and now it's more demanding and you got to spend the hours there instead of being able to participate in the ministry and still being able to pray like you were doing your devotions and all of that beforehand, spending time with God, developing your walk in your private time. See, God is concerned about relationship. Now, that song we sang, that's a wonderful song, that last song about you better stop and get religion. Now, I'd have to tweak it just a little bit. You ought to stop and get salvation because there's a difference between salvation and religion. There are a lot of religion because religion means I'm doing things religiously. So I'm going through the motions, but there is no relationship necessarily. Everybody got a religion. Even those that don't believe in God, they call what they do believe their religion. But salvation, we know from the word of God, salvation is through faith in the work that Jesus Christ done. The shedding of his blood to pay the penalty that we could not pay. But the shedding of his blood allows the father to see his son's blood that's been applied to our account. And his righteousness was accounted to our righteousness because you know and I know on our best of days, we mess up. And God is a holy God. So instead of looking at us, he's, the word says, I am the righteousness of Jesus. In other words, it's not my own righteousness, but it's the righteousness of Jesus because of my faith in him and receiving the work that he done. And I accepted that by faith. And so the word says, for by grace am I saved. Not of works, lest anyone should bait. But religion is based on works. How many tasks can you do? How, how much of the, the rules do you follow and get it right? And those organizations... They rank you and promote you based on how well you follow the rules and know what the regulations are and how well you follow what their guidelines are. And you move up and rank and teach others. Salvation is the whole man. Realizing that we needed a savior and could not save ourselves. Little by little, when we understand that concept, we won't be so frustrated. But God told them, he says, I'm going to drive them out little by little. Now, let me tell you, and he says, I'm going to do that. You won't be able to defeat the enemy all at once because if you do, I'm going to have to release the beast because God got to bring some balance in place. And let me illustrate that. Now, I'm sitting down here in this audience, praise God. Now, as I sit here and you look across, we all on the same level. But that gift that God placed in you, if you sitting out here and I look around, I don't know what kind of gift you got in you. I can't look at you and say, oh, you a dancer. You a singer. You a finance person. But when I begin to let my gift come forth, God start elevating me. Now y'all can see me because I'm, I'm a little bit high. 
I become the target. That's what the enemy wants you to do is look at the gift that you have and how good you are so you can get elevated. But what happens is it goes to your head and you begin to think you're more than you are, not realizing where the gift came from. But God is saying, you better recognize because I don't want the beast to overtake you. Because when you rise too fast and get there the wrong way, you ain't going to be there. And if we look at athletes, they start out trying to make the team and do all of that, and they're doing all this super stuff. Then they get chosen for the team that they want to play with. They get all these contracts with all this money coming in. So much money they ain't never seen, they ain't, ain't even able to handle it. Even with the, the folk that they got handling the money, they won't even let them do their job because they're using it the way they want to use it and dictate it. And so next thing you know, they had all that money, and then you read about it and say, they broke. Bankrupt. And you're trying to figure out in the world you bankrupt and you got a $100 million, $200 million contract. Because you got there the wrong way. You looked at your ability and your talent as what caused you to get there. Now, yeah, that was part of it, but where did it come from? Did God not bless you with that talent and ability? But when he blessed you with it, you forgot about God. All you begin to see is, my name is in the headlines. Turn the channel. I'm on all the channels. The enemy blowing your head up. God said little by little, so I got to balance this thing. So if you start going too fast, I'm going to bring out the beast to bring you in balance. That's why he said, you ain't going to, he told him right from, you can't defeat all your enemies at one time. But it's going to be done little by little as I drive them out. Because if you do, the beast is going to come and snare you. If you walk into success too fast, too quick, you'll put God on the back burner. And if you leave God out, the ship is going down. It's just a matter of time. But God was encouraging them to say, I promised you victory and success. I say you're going to the promised land, and I'm going to get you to the promised land, but you got to go the route that I'm taking you to get there. And when we understand that principle, we'll see what's going on. And as I look back in the word of God in uh, 1 Samuel, praise God, the uh, third chapter, it talks about in third chapter, first verse, it said, Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time, Eli was laying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. So he ran to Eli. Here I am, for you called me. And Eli said, I didn't call you. But Samuel heard the voice, but he thought it was Eli. And the reason was, is he ministered, because verse 1 says that he ministered to the Lord. But he didn't know the voice of the Lord. What is that saying to us? You got folk ministering by praising, singing, doing whatever, job titles and all of that in the church. They're doing the duties, but they don't have the relationship that when God is speaking that they hear God because they're too busy doing the works. God is interested in relationship. Not just the works, but the works comes out of our relationship building with God. And Samuel, if you know the story, God called him three times, and then the third time it hit Saul, and he said, oh, when you hear the voice this time, Eli said, I'm sorry, when Eli told uh, Samuel, he said, go back and lay down, and if you hear it this time, say, speak 
for your speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Because Eli recognized that it was God calling him since he had not called him. And he says it's got to be God. So he told uh, Samuel to lay back down. And when he heard the voice, speak and say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. And then when he did, God began to share the word with Samuel. And verse 1 told us that the word was rare in those days. Because there weren't that many that could hear God's word and deliver it to the people. Because God only spoke through his prophets back in the older day. And so when he began to speak to Samuel, Samuel was a child. But it tells us, that I think it's around verse 6 or so, it says that Samuel did not know the Lord. But when Eli told him this time, you tell the Lord to speak and let him know your servant heard. And then God began to give Samuel the word. And when the Lord spoke to Samuel, he told him what he needed him to go back and tell Eli. And the Lord spoke because, see, Eli had some sons working in the temple that he let do all the wrong that they were doing and did not correct them or stop them from doing all crazy stuff in the house of God. And God had made a promise that he was going to judge that house. And it tells later on in that verse, he said, yeah, and let him know his sacrifice, his offerings, praise, none of that is going to replace the fact that my judgment is going to come as I have spoken. And so as he began to do that, the next morning, um, Eli asked Samuel, what did the Lord say? Samuel didn't really want to give that word to Eli because it won't when them hallelujahs jump up and run around. He was letting them know God is going to judge you just like he promised he was going to judge your house and that you would not escape and there is no offering or nothing you can do to avoid it. God is going to do all that has been spoken to you and your family because you refuse to correct your sons from doing all sorts of things in the house of God. And I shared that example to let us understand and see, praise God, that it's possible to be working and doing all the things for the Lord, but yet not have a relationship. God is more interested in the relationship than he is the work. Little by little. And when we go God's way, we are not going to miss out on anything. But the world and the enemy make you think, if I don't hear him get this done, I'm getting old and this is happening, I ain't going to be able to experience it. Nah, if God said it, God's able to do it. But it's his timing when we get ready. So when we focus on our relationship, the process will be much sooner because God now knows that we are mature enough to handle what he's taking us into. Psalm 84 and 11 says, no good thing will I withhold from them that walk upright towards me. It's not a matter of whether God want to bless you. It's not a matter of whether he want to set you on the path of success. But you must walk upright before him. Your heart must be turned towards the Lord. So he's trying to settle that because, you know, some folk think that God don't want you to have a whole lot of success and, and victory and all of that. They think you got to stay down here to be considered humble. They ain't got nothing to do with humble on what you got. That's your mindset on do you allow what you have to make you think you better than what you are. That's all that is. Humbleness is you don't allow stuff to replace who you are. And God is interested in who you are and your relationship, not what you do. Praise God, little by little. And I'm getting ready to bring this thing to a close, but there's one last scripture that I thought was interested in 2 Chronicles, the uh, 26, second, yeah, the 26th chapter of 2 Chronicles, um, verse 14. It said, Then Uzziah prepared for them for the entire army, shields, spears, Helmets, body armor, bows, and slings to cast stones. And when he made devices in Jerusalem, invented by skillful men to be on the towers 
and the corners to shoot arrows and large stones. So his fame spread far and wide, for he was marvelously helped until till he became strong. But verse 16 is a key. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God by entering the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Now it tells you how God gave King Uzziah the ability to get all these inventions and stuff for the army and how he made everything. And his name became so great because he caused these instruments and stuff to be made. But it says that when his name became famous, he got lifted up. Oh, I'm good. I'm important. That was the mindset that he was getting into. But the word says, but when he thought he was strong because of what he had done, it says, that's when he began to fall. Because it said, he got lifted up. Pride set in. Elitism, like I'm, I'm up here now, y'all down there. I done rose up above you. And that began to be his downfall. So he goes to the temple. Only the priest that was appointed was able to light incense in the house of God or in the temple. Oh, he, he, he was so important now. He, he was so famous. He felt like he could do it even though that was out of order. And so the, the priest that was around, they sent they said, uh, King, uh, you shouldn't be doing that. You're not the one to light this incense. That is to be done by the priest. And he got mad, the word says mad, if you read later on in there, about them telling him what he could not do because he felt he was so important. Have you seen folk like that? Know everything? They in charge? They wrong? You know they wrong and you trying to let them know they wrong? Oh, they ain't trying to hear you because they feel above you. No correction. The priest told them, and when they saw him, it said that he was so mad. Oh, he was going to go ahead on and light it then for real because they told him he won't in position and wasn't appointed to do so. So he goes on and doing it. And while he yet done it, it said prophecy, I mean leprosy came upon him as he lit it and it stayed upon him. And the priest, they, they got, on, got on up out in the way because they was like, I don't know what else the Lord going to do, but we got to get away from him because he went against what God has said because he felt he was all of that. When we come back to the principles of God's word, it will help keep so much frustration, aggravation, of uh, making us feel like, ain't, you know, why am I even here? What am I doing? I ain't this, I ain't that. you who God made you to be. Walk in who God called you, not in what somebody else thinks you ought to be. But be who God made you and build that relationship with him. Not trying to please man and all of that. But what do God want for you? And that is what we want to do. That example right there in the word. It just brought it to reality. Because y'all know that the Lord. I like to use scripture. And principles from God's word. These stories are so that we can learn from them. So that we can apply it in our everyday lives. So that we can begin to move in our journey, in our walk with the Lord. Because God says little by little. And some, the enemy might be speaking, and I, I can just share this, is that when I first came here, you know, as pastor and everything, and began to teach and preach the word, and, and I would have these dreams or whatever, and I just would see a quick glimpse of the church overflowing. And then I'm looking, and we ain't got a few members but I could see it actually being filled to the overflowing and I began to begin to, to move like we were getting there. And then God began to add and, and you know what? And even though it was a, the numbers were not great like everybody thought numbers ought to be, God still sustained the ministry. He still continued to grow the ministry. He made the provisions and God is still moving the ministry forward. And so he was teaching, I don't love you no more 
than when you got five people than when you got 50 people. My love for you does not change. God does not change his love for us regardless of where we are. And when we understand that, it's not about all the stuff we do. It's about, is our relationship, is our heart turned toward the Lord? Because if our heart is turned towards him, he can work with us. But it's little by little. And I have no doubt that God going to do what he says he's going to do. All I need is some folk to believe it. But you know what? The ones that don't believe it, God will send them on. But he'll send those that will believe and watch the expansion. But it's for his glory. It's his timing. Because we don't base it on what we see. Y'all hear me say it all the time. God called us to walk by faith and not by sight. That's not just a phrase. That's a reality. Because if you base it on what you see, you sit down and cross your legs and say, let somebody else handle this. Because you don't, we wouldn't see it. But if God spoke it, it's going to be. And if we choose not to participate, he'll get somebody that will participate. Because he's going to bring to pass that that he has spoken. And when we understand that, that applies to your individual lives and what you have before the Lord. And the enemy don't want you to understand that, don't want you to understand truly who you are. Because when you know who you are, he can't keep lying to you and you buy the lies. Praise God. Sister Maxine, as I was just, just sharing that word right there, the gift of miming and all that you put in, and we begin to say that if there was others that wanted to participate, youth or whatever, with the mind, and you begin to, to bring forth that mind, being that it's something new, the enemy going to try to mess with you even more. You thought he was messing with you, but he's going to mess with you now, because guess what? That's going to bless somebody else. There's another form of ministry that you are participating that God is trying to introduce to reach the body. That's with any gift that you have. When you begin to operate it as unto the Lord, even your job, when you work that job as unto the Lord, and it don't matter whether the person beside you is slacking off or doing nothing, you ain't got nothing to do with that. You have to remind yourself, God, I'm working as unto you. You can't look at the boss and say, I ain't doing that. They ain't doing nothing. You ain't said nothing to them. That's between them and the boss. You have some to God. You got a direct supervisor, but when you belong to the Lord, that's who you answering to. He wants you to show respect, and you have to bring yourself in order and say, oh, I work as unto the Lord. So whatever the task is, you go ahead on and do it because you're doing it as unto the Lord. It may be unfair, unjust, but if you know how to do it with the right attitude, God will cause you to navigate right around all that mistreatment. And the next thing you know, you're going to be elevated where you need to be, and ain't nobody going to figure out how you got there because you wouldn't play their games. You wouldn't waver, you wouldn't bend because you thought that was the way to get promoted. You knew that promotion came from the Lord. Not from the east, not from the but from the Lord. And since you knew it came from the Lord and you've been instructed to work as unto the Lord, you do everything that you do to please God and then he'll take care of the rest. Little by little will he drive the enemy out. Even if he had to get rid of that boss that's trying to tie you up with a rope and hold you down and you keep advancing. If he had to take him out, he'll take him out. But your job is to keep magnifying the Lord through the quality of your work and do it with love. Knowing that I'm working as unto the Lord. They treat me wrong, but I ain't doing it for them. I'm doing it for the Lord. Because that's the gifting and what he placed in me. Little by little. And if we get that concept, then it's easier for us to let patience have its perfect work. And when patience got its work, it may take a little long, but everything is coming out like it ought to come out because I let it ride its course. And 
That's all God is saying. Little by little, but you have to know he's with you every step of the way. We thank God for his word. Amen.